welcome to Classical Mechanics 2. In this video, we'll find that the Euler angle description is a natural coordinate system to study the physics of rotating tops. Rigid bodies can generally have three independent principal moments, but let's consider a special case that's symmetric. Let's say that I11 equals I22. That means that E1 and E2 are any pair of orthogonal axes that are mutually orthogonal to the third principal axis, E3. In this setup, psi here is the angle the body spins around the E3 axis, theta is the angle it makes with the z-direction, and phi is the angle around the z-direction. First off, let's take a look at how the physics works when we take the Euler angles to be our generalized coordinates. Since this is an orthonormal system, we can write any vector in terms of our principal axes E1, E2, and E3. Our total angular velocity vector then is given by the coefficient omega 1 times the unit vector in the E1 direction plus the coefficient omega 2 times the unit vector in the E2 direction plus the coefficient omega 3 times the unit vector in the E3 direction. In terms of our Euler angles, this is given by phi dot in the z direction plus theta dot in the E2 direction plus psi dot in the E3 direction. This isn't exactly our body frame, but this is somewhat useful because gravity is always going to act in the z direction. But let's re-express the z direction in terms of our body frame. And we get that z hat is equal to cosine theta in the e3 direction and minus sine theta in the e1 direction. That tells us that the three components of the angular momentum in terms of the principal axes are given by minus phi dot times sine theta in the e1 direction plus theta dot in the e2 direction plus psi dot plus phi dot cosine theta in the e3 direction. Likewise, we know that the angular momentum in this coordinate system, which is given by the angular momentum tensor times the angular velocity vector, is given by minus I11 times phi dot times sine theta in the E1 direction plus I11 times theta dot in the E2 direction plus I33 times psi dot plus phi dot cosine theta in the E3 direction. We know that this last term here is just I33 times omega 3, which means that this in here is equal to omega 3. It'll help us out later if we write out the expression for the z component of the angular momentum, which is I11 times phi dot times sine squared theta plus I33 times psi dot plus phi dot cosine theta times cosine theta. If we substitute in our definition for L3, this gives us I11 times phi dot times sine squared theta plus L3 cosine theta. It turns out this gives us an expression for phi dot in terms of LZ, L3, and theta, and we're going to be using this later. The other physical quantity that we'll find useful is the kinetic energy, which is one half times the angular velocity vector dotted into the angular momentum. This is given by 1 half I11 times phi dot squared times sine squared theta plus theta dot squared plus 1 half I33 times omega 3 squared. Let's imagine now that this object is a spinning top. It has mass m and the distance from the origin to its center of mass is r. That gives us a potential energy of mgr cosine theta. The top is rotating about the z-axis at some rate phi dot, which we just worked out to be LZ minus L3 cosine theta divided by I11 times sine squared theta. Now we can write down the Lagrangian, which is the kinetic energy minus the potential energy. And this gives us 1 half I11 times phi dot squared times sine squared theta plus theta dot squared plus 1 half I33 times psi dot plus phi dot times cosine theta quantity squared minus MGR cosine theta. Since we have three generalized coordinates, phi, theta, and psi, we'll have three Euler-Lagrange equations to write. First, the Euler-Lagrange equation for theta is dl by d theta is equal to d by dt of dl by d theta dot. 
This gives us I11 theta double dot is equal to I11 phi dot squared times sine theta times cosine theta minus I33 times psi dot plus phi dot cosine theta all times sine theta plus MGR sine theta. You'll note that the Lagrangian doesn't depend directly on either psi or phi, which means that the generalized momenta for each of these are constant. The generalized phi momentum is given by I11 times phi dot sine squared theta plus I33 psi dot plus phi dot cosine theta times cosine theta. And likewise, the generalized psi momentum is given by I33 times psi dot plus phi dot cosine theta. You'll note that this is exactly what we just worked out to be the definition of the angular momentum component L3, which is I33 times omega 3. This tells us that L3, which is the angular momentum about this axis, is conserved. First, let's look at steady precession. This means that theta is a constant. Since the definition of phi dot depends only on theta, it too is a constant, and we'll call it big omega. This type of steady rotation about the z-axis is called precession. Now we'll solve for what the rate of precession, big omega, is. We know that p phi is a constant, so that its derivative with time must vanish, which is i11 times phi dot squared times sine theta times cosine theta minus i33 times omega 3 times phi dot times sine theta plus mgr sine theta. Now let's replace each of the phi dot terms here with big omega. This tells us that I11 times big omega squared times cosine theta minus I33 times omega 3 times big omega plus MGR is equal to zero. This gives us a quadratic equation for big omega. And the two roots of big omega are given by 1 half I33 times omega 3 divided by I11 cosine theta plus or minus 1 half 1 over I11 times cosine theta times the square root of I33 squared omega 3 squared minus 4 I11 times MGR cosine theta. When I33 times omega 3 squared is greater than 4I11 times MGR cosine theta, the top can process at two angular speeds, omega plus or omega minus. When omega plus is much, much greater than omega minus, omega plus is approximately equal to I33 times omega 3 divided by I11 times cosine theta, and omega minus is approximately equal to MGR divided by I33 times omega 3. It's not always true that theta dot is equal to zero. In this case, we can't assume that phi dot is going to be constant anymore. This means that there might be a bobble in the procession. This bobble is called nutation, which comes from the Latin word meaning to nod repeatedly. In this regime, we'll assume, however, that omega 3 is much, much greater than the other rates, so phi dot and theta dot. Now we want to solve for the time dependence of phi and theta. As we said before, the rate of change of the angular momentum in the z direction is zero, which tells us that I11 times phi double dot times sine squared theta plus I11 times phi dot times sine theta times cosine theta times theta dot minus I33 times omega 3 times sine theta times theta dot is equal to zero. We know that phi dot and theta dot are small, so this term is approximately equal to zero and we end up with I11 times phi double dot times sine theta minus phi dot times I33 times omega 3 is equal to zero. We're going to be coming back to this equation again, so we're going to call it equation star. If we take the derivative of equation star, we end up with this. I11 times phi triple dot times sine theta minus I11 times phi double dot times cosine theta times theta dot minus theta double dot times I33 times omega 3. This really doesn't seem very useful until we realize that the second order term in theta and phi dot vanishes. So this term here is also approximately equal to zero. Next, we'll want to get rid of this theta double dot term so that we have a differential equation and one variable. 
And we can do that if we recall the Euler-Lagrange equation for theta. I11 theta double dot is equal to minus I33 omega 3 times phi dot plus mgr. Now this lets us eliminate theta double dot from this equation. And we end up with d squared phi dot by dt squared is equal to i33 times omega 3 divided by i11 quantity squared times phi dot minus mgr divided by i33 times omega 3. So this is a second order ODE for phi dot. Note that this term here and this term are constants. So we'll call them omega n and omega s for reasons which will become clear momentarily. We can now see that this is our harmonic equation for phi dot. Therefore, phi dot is equal to omega s plus a times cosine omega n t plus gamma, which we can integrate to give us phi as a function of t, which is phi naught plus omega s times t plus a over omega n times sine of omega n times t plus gamma. Next thing we'll want to do is solve for the theta term. To do this, we'll just plug the definition for phi into our equation star, and we end up with I11 times A omega n sine omega n t plus gamma times sine theta is equal to theta dot times I33 times omega 3, where omega n is equal to I33 times omega 3 divided by I11. This means that we can divide through by I11 and cancel out a factor of omega n from both sides of the equation. And this gives us a first order equation for theta. Theta dot is equal to minus a sine theta times sine omega t plus gamma. In this setup, we know that theta dot, which is the rate that the top bobbles in the z direction, is much, much less than omega n, which is the rate that the top bobbles in the phi direction. This tells us that sine theta doesn't change very much and is therefore approximately equal to its initial value, sine of theta naught. Now we can integrate the equation for theta, which gives us theta as a function of t is equal to b plus a over omega n times sine theta naught plus cosine of omega n times t plus gamma. Okay, now we've solved for the equations for theta, phi, and psi, all in terms of our physical parameters of our system. So what does the motion of this top look like? Let's go back to our phi dot equation to help us out. When Lz is greater than L3, phi dot cannot change signs, so theta will always proceed with a single sign. That looks like this. Phi moves steadily in one direction and theta oscillates between two values, theta one and theta two. If on the other hand, LZ is less than L3, then the sine of phi dot can change. This means that phi moves both forward and backward while theta oscillates. Today we've discussed the math and physics behind a rotating heavy top. This is the last video in the current classical mechanics series. If there are other topics you'd like to see, let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.